Welcome to History Homework. This is part two of our look at Gaius Julius Caesar. Consulship and military campaigns. In 60 BC, Caesar sought election as consul for 59 BC, along with two other candidates. The election was sordid. Even Cato, with his reputation for incorruptibility, is said to have resorted to bribery in favor of one of Caesar's opponents. Caesar won, along with conservative Marcus Bibulus. Caesar was already in Marcus Licinius Crassus' political debt, but he also made overtures to Pompey. Pompey and Crassus had been at odds for a decade, so Caesar tried to reconcile them. The three of them had enough money and political influence to control public business. This informal alliance, known as the First Triumvirate, rule of three men, was cemented by the marriage of Pompey to Caesar's daughter Julia. Caesar also married again. This time, Calpurnia, who was the daughter of another powerful senator. Caesar proposed a law for redistributing public lands to the poor, by force of arms, if need be, a proposal supported by Pompey and by Crassus, making the triumvirate public. Pompey filled the city with soldiers, a move which intimidated the triumvirate's opponents. Bibulus attempted to declare the omens unfavorable and thus void the new law, but he was driven from the forum by Caesar's armed supporters. His lictors had their fasces broken, two high magistrates accompanying him were wounded, and he had a bucket of excrement thrown over him. In fear of his life, he retired to his house for the rest of the year, issuing occasional proclamations of bad omens. These attempts proved ineffective in obstructing Caesar's legislation. Roman satirists ever after referred to the year as the consulship of Julius and Caesar. When Caesar was first elected, The aristocracy tried to limit his future power by allotting the woods and pastures of Italy, rather than the governorship of a province, as his military command duty after his year in office was over. With the help of political allies, Caesar secured passage of the Lex Vatinia, granting him governorship over Cisalpine Gaul, northern Italy, and Illyricum, southeastern Europe. At the instigation of Pompey and his father in law Piso, Transalpine Gaul, southern France, Was added later after the untimely death of its governor, giving him command of four legions. The term of his governorship, and thus his immunity from prosecution, was set at five years, rather than the usual one. When his consulship ended, Caesar narrowly avoided prosecution for the irregularities of his year in office, and quickly left for his province. Conquest of Gaul. Caesar was still deeply in debt, but there was money to be made as a governor. Whether by extortion, 56, or by military adventurism. Caesar had four legions under his command, two of his provinces bordered on unconquered territory, and parts of Gaul were known to be unstable. Some of Rome's Gallic allies had been defeated by their rivals at the Battle of Magetabriga, with the help of a contingent of Germanic tribes. The Romans feared these tribes were preparing to migrate south, closer to Italy, and that they had warlike intent. Caesar raised two new legions and defeated these tribes. In response to Caesar's earlier activities, the tribes in the northeast began to arm themselves. Caesar treated this as an aggressive move and, after an inconclusive engagement against the united tribes, he conquered the tribes piecemeal. Meanwhile, one of his legions began the conquest of the tribes in the far north, directly opposite Britain. During the spring of 56 BC, the triumvirs held a conference. As Rome was in turmoil and Caesar's political alliance was coming undone. The Lucca Conference renewed the First Triumvirate and extended Caesar's governorship for another five years. The conquest of the north was soon completed, while a few pockets of resistance remained. Caesar now had a secure base from which to launch an invasion of Britain. In 55 BC, Caesar repelled an incursion into Gaul by two Germanic tribes. And followed it up by building a bridge across the Rhine and making a show of force in Germanic territory, before returning and dismantling the bridge. Late that summer, having subdued two other tribes, he crossed into Britain, claiming that the Britons had aided one of his enemies the previous year, possibly the Veneti of Brittany. His knowledge of Britain was poor, and although he gained a beachhead on the coast, he could not advance further. He raided out from his beachhead and destroyed some villages, then returned to Gaul for the winter. He returned the following year, better prepared and with a larger force, and achieved more. He advanced inland and established a few alliances, but poor harvests led to widespread revolt in Gaul, forcing Caesar to leave Britain for the last time. While Caesar was in Britain, his daughter Julia, Pompey's wife, had died in childbirth. 
Caesar tried to re-secure Pompey's support by offering him his great niece in marriage, but Pompey declined. In 53 BC, Crassus was killed, leading a failed invasion of the East. Rome was on the brink of civil war. Pompey was appointed sole consul as an emergency measure and married the daughter of a political opponent of Caesar. The triumvirate was dead. Though the Gallic tribes were just as strong as the Romans militarily, the internal division among the Gauls guaranteed an easy victory for Caesar. Vercingetorix's attempt in 52 BC to unite them against Roman invasion came too late. He proved an astute commander, defeating Caesar at the Battle of Gergovia. But Caesar's elaborate siege works at the Battle of Alesia finally forced his surrender. Despite scattered outbreaks of warfare the following year, Gaul was effectively conquered. Plutarch claimed that during the Gallic Wars, the army had fought against three million men, of whom one million died, and another million were enslaved, subjugated three hundred tribes, and destroyed eight hundred cities. The casualty figures are disputed by modern historians. Civil War in 50 BC, the Senate, led by Pompey, ordered Caesar to disband his army and return to Rome because his term as governor had finished. There is scholarly disagreement as to the specific reasons why Caesar marched on Rome. The possibility of prosecution for actions in his consulship of 59 was unlikely. His objectives prior to the civil war were to secure himself an immediate second consulship and a triumph, having given up his triumph in 60 BC to stand for his first consulship. Caesar feared that his opponents, then holding both consulships for 50, would reject his candidacy, refuse to ratify an election result in which he was a victor, or deny him a triumph for Gaul. By the end of the year 50, both Caesar and Pompey were preparing for armed conflict, an attempt to stave off war pushed forward by Cicero in the autumn, in which both Caesar and Pompey would disarm. Was vetoed by the Pompeians in the consulship even after Cicero's plan received the overwhelming support of the Senate. On the 10th of January 49 BC, Caesar crossed the Rubicon River, the frontier boundary of Italy, with only a single legion, the Legio 13 Gemina, and ignited civil war. Upon crossing the Rubicon, Caesar, according to Plutarch and Suetonius, is supposed to have quoted the Athenian playwright Menander in Greek, the die is cast. Erasmus, however, notes that the more accurate Latin translation of the Greek imperative mood would be "Alia i acta esto, let the die be cast." Pompey and many of the Senate fled to the south, having little confidence in Pompey's newly raised troops. Pompey, despite greatly outnumbering Caesar, who only had his thirteenth legion with him, did not intend to fight. Caesar pursued Pompey, hoping to capture Pompey before his legions could escape. Pompey managed to escape before Caesar could capture him. Heading for Hispania, Caesar left Italy under the control of Mark Antony. After an astonishing 27-day route march, Caesar defeated Pompey's lieutenants, then returned east to challenge Pompey in Illyria, where, on the 10th of July 48 BC, in the Battle of Dyrrhachium, Caesar barely avoided a catastrophic defeat. In an exceedingly short engagement later that year. He decisively defeated Pompey at Pharsalus in Greece on the 9th of August 48 BC. In Rome, Caesar was appointed dictator, with Mark Antony as his master of the horse, second in command. Caesar presided over his own election to a second consulship and then, after 11 days, resigned this dictatorship. Caesar then pursued Pompey to Egypt, arriving soon after the murder of the general. There, Caesar was presented with Pompey's severed head and seal ring, receiving these with tears. He then had Pompey's assassins put to death. Caesar then became involved with an Egyptian civil war between the child Pharaoh and his sister, wife, and co-regent queen Cleopatra. Perhaps as a result of the Pharaoh's role in Pompey's murder, Caesar sided with Cleopatra. He withstood the siege of Alexandria and later he defeated the pharaoh's forces at the Battle of the Nile in 47 BC and installed Cleopatra as ruler. Caesar and Cleopatra celebrated their victory with a triumphal procession on the Nile in the spring of 47 BC. The royal barge was accompanied by 400 additional ships, and Caesar was introduced to the luxurious lifestyle of the Egyptian pharaohs. Caesar and Cleopatra were not married. Caesar continued his relationship with Cleopatra throughout his last marriage. In Roman eyes, this did not constitute adultery, and probably fathered a son called Caesarion. Cleopatra visited Rome on more than one occasion, residing in Caesar's villa just outside Rome across the Tiber. Late in 48 BC, 
Caesar was again appointed dictator, with a term of one year. After spending the first months of 47 BC in Egypt, Caesar went to the Middle East, where he annihilated the king of Pontus. His victory was so swift and complete that he mocked Pompey's previous victories over such poor enemies. On his way to Pontus, Caesar visited Tarsus from 27 to the 29th of May 47 BC, 25 to 27 Magreg, where he met enthusiastic support, but where, according to Cicero, Cassius was planning to kill him at this point. Thence, he proceeded to Africa to deal with the remnants of Pompey's senatorial supporters. He was defeated by Titus Labienus at Ruspina on the 4th of January 46 BC, but recovered to gain a significant victory at Thapsus on the 6th of April 46 BC over Cato, who then committed suicide. After this victory, he was appointed dictator for 10 years. Pompey's sons escaped to Hispania. Caesar gave chase and defeated the last remnants of opposition in the Battle of Munda in March 45 BC. During this time, Caesar was elected to his third and fourth terms as consul in 46 BC and 45 BC. This last time without a colleague. Thank you for watching history homework. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave a like and click the bell button for more videos in the future.